thank you very much, Sarah. It's awesome to be here today with all of you lovely people, men and women, well, especially women, being International Women's Day a week. So let me ask you a question. Do you think what you have to say isn't interesting or important enough to share in mass media? Are you tempted to let someone else take the limelight because your imposter syndrome is holding you back from sharing your stories and your expertise? Today, I choose to challenge your perception about this. I'm thrilled to be able to inspire you to magnify your message because as women, we can't afford to make ourselves invisible. As you heard, um, I used to work at a current affair. And this is where I learned everything about how not to do PR. So the reason I say this, I was contacted all day long by business owners, marketing managers, very angry and dodgy neighbours, <laughs> all wanting their story on air, but having no idea how to pitch a story effectively to a busy journalist and producer um, and in, to get that cut through. And I'll give you a bit of an example of this. So one day I was at work, phone was ringing hot as always, and I got a call from the brand new marketing manager of a new margarine company called Local. So the thing about Local is that it claimed that it would reduce your cholesterol. And at the time, cholesterol was the talk of the day. Now it's all about sort of being gluten-free and paleo diets. But back in the mid to late 90s, we all wanted to reduce our cholesterol. So she said to me, look, we've got this great new margarine. Can you run a story on it? And I said, well, it sounds kind of interesting, but what's the hook? What's the angle? What are we going to film? What are the visuals? And she said, oh, I haven't really thought about that. Can't you just do a story about this brand new product? And I said, actually, that's more of a job for the advertising department. You've called the production team. So why don't you go away and have a bit of a think about it? And if you can come up with something, let me know. And I politely hung up. <laughs> if you can politely hang up. Uh, and then um, a couple of days later, I was in the production team, as we had every week, discussing stories that were on the board. And I mentioned this phone call. And we decided that we did want to do a story about this brand new margarine. The reason being, as I said, everyone was grappling with cholesterol levels. And as a journalist and a media outlet, we want to produce content around what people are grappling with. So we came up with the idea to get a whole group of um, Australians together. I think there were about 500 people and put them on the low coal challenge. So half the group, um, would incorporate local into their daily diet. The other half would have their normal butter or whatever it was. And three and six months later would test their cholesterol levels. So I rang the production, uh, the marketing manager back and I told her our idea, but I said, look, this is the deal. If um, it works out well and everyone's cholesterol gets reduced, that's gonna look great for you. But if that doesn't actually happen, we're still going to run the story. So what do you want to do? And I guess she was prepared to put her job on the line <laughs> at the end of the day, because she said, yes, let's go for it. We did this story. It was about an eight minute story. And from the minute it went to air, that brand catapulted to a level of success that they never dreamt possible. And it was situations like this that I saw that the power media had to really catapult a business to, to what their wildest dreams and um, really help them magnify their message and get that visibility and credibility. And that's when I started my business, WordStorm PR. So I was 25 years old. I was fairly young and naive. Um, I, you know, adopted Claire's just say yes attitude. I saw this opportunity. Um, and we've been working with entrepreneurs and purpose-driven businesses for over 20 years to magnify their message. And today I'm going to share with you how women can stand up, be visible, and magnify your message in the media. But before I do that, I'm gonna give you a very quick lesson in media. So any media outlet, whether it's um, an online news site, a radio show, or your favorite TV program, is made up of two key elements. And those elements cannot exist without each other. They coexist, but they don't work together necessarily. So on the one side, you have the advertisers 
and they're the ones that keep any media outlet alive. There is no media outlet out there that doesn't have paying advertisers. But on the other hand, who's going to you know, look at your favorite online news site or click into your favorite TV current affair program if it's full of ads? I, sus I suspect the answer is you would not do this. <laughs> And the reason you check into your favorite media outlets is because you're there to read the stories. And that's where the journalists come in. So the journalists are there to produce content that will add value to and engage their audience, to keep their audiences tuned in and new audiences coming in and coming back for more. Because guess what? If they do that, the advertisers can get charged more and they can draw in new advertisers. So here's an example in the financial review from last year. On the right hand side, we have a lovely big ad, um, Leg Mason, they had full control of that page, exactly what went on there and what, you know, what it said, and they paid a lot of money for that. And on the left hand side, we have my lovely client, Rachel Setti. She's an organizational psychologist. And this story was pitched to the financial review about six weeks into lockdown and the whole working from home conundrum. So we knew that people were grappling with working from home and how to keep that stamina going, particularly those of us with kids. I have three who are at home also doing homeschooling. So that's the article that ended up in the Fin Review is the work from home honeymoon over. And Rachel didn't pay a cent to the financial review for that story. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how to access that free side of media that gives you far more credibility than an ad because nobody is going to buy an ad that says our service and business is really crap, don't buy anything from me. <laughs> so the opportunity for you is that the media is thirsty for content. Every day, producers, journalists from across all media outlets are looking for stories. And you have those stories and expertise to share. At WordStorm, we've never really worked with celebrities. Okay, we, we did have one nightmare assignment with Paris Hilton. I won't go into that. After that, I decided I'm never working with a celebrity again. We work with ordinary, wonderful, purpose-driven, amazing Australians to get their story in mass media. And it's very possible to do that. But in order to do that, you need to have a hook. 90% of what you watch, see and read in the media is PR driven. And a lot of people aren't aware of this. So what that means is, you know, when you um, at your local cafe on the weekend, having brunch, um, those of you who have time, and I really hope you make time for those sorts of delicious things in life, and you're opening up, you know, your favourite, um, your Good Weekend or the Australian magazine, whatever it might be, every story you read in there, 90% of those are, come from businesses and individuals approaching the journalist to write a story about that. Um, or, yeah, and the rest is sort of <laughs> newslet articles. So, but the way you get into that 90% is by having a hook. So by having a newsworthy hook, what it does is you're speaking to journalists in their language. So when we work with a client, we layer their content over seven newsworthy hooks to make it instantly newsworthy and get cut through to a busy journalist. Now today I have time to share three of the top sort of newsworthy hooks and angles that I use each and every day to get our clients in mass media. All right. The first hook, and this is probably my favorite, it's the business story, your entrepreneurial business story. But when most people think about pitching their business story to the media, they think they have to razzle and dazzle with exponential growth and huge numbers. But in actual fact, the journalist is more interested in the heart of the story. What inspired you to start your business and what challenges have you overcome? They actually want to see some vulnerability um, and a bit of vulnerability makes a good human interest angle. Just think of reality TV shows. A lot of us are addicted to those and I have signed off quite a few years ago on most of them, especially Married at First Sight. But anyway, 
Um, with the reason Australians love watching reality TV programs is because it's a bit like it's a bit voyeuristic and it's almost a bit like watching a train wreck happen and you feel like your life's, you know, you feel pretty good about your, your life. Um, so, so too with entrepreneurial business stories, share a bit of the heart and inspiration and challenges of your story to get that cut through. Here's an example. So one of our clients, Costume, <laughs> Costume Box is an amazing online retailer business um, you've probably heard of it. You've possibly bought costumes from there before. And I knew there was a really strong business story to be told. But I knew that going to the journalist and just saying Costume Box is an amazing business would not get cut through. So I chatted to my client, Nikki, and I said, tell me about what happened before Costume Box. And I just kept digging and digging. What were you doing before and what challenges have you overcome? And she told me that actually, she had studied to be an archaeologist. Um, she did an archaeology degree and was ready to spend her whole life being an archaeologist. But on her very first dig, she hurt her back. Um, she could no longer do it. And, and then she, that dig, then she ended up being, finding out she was pregnant. Um, and then she ended up in the obstetrician office where she happened to be in the waiting room with her future business partner because they got chatting about potential business ideas. And I thought that's the angle that these journos are going to go for because it's sort of archeology span is kind of sexy. There's a bit of mystery around it. And it's also showing how she actually thought her whole life was going in one direction, but ended up going in a completely different direction. So what's your story? What, what's at the heart of your story? And some people have a very obvious um, PR dream of a story. Others have to dig a bit further, pardon the pun, with this archaeology um, story. But we've all got a story, so find yours. The next one is top five tips. Now, media love these, and in media lingo, it's called listicles. And the reason media love it, it's something that people can consume very easily on their mobile phone while they're on the train or waiting for their daughter or son to finish their ballet class. Um, you know, we're always looking at the media and sort of we're clicking into these um, articles. And when you read something that has top five tips, you feel like you've learned something in a very short period of time. So you feel like you've been given some value. So here's an example about Groundswell Project, which is a not-for-profit organisation all about making Australia a, a more a death literate society. And we knew a strong angle would be five tips on how to talk to your children about death, because all parents will grapple with this topic at some point or another, whether it's a, a pet, um, a grandparent, or hopefully no one closer or something, nothing more tragic, but that does happen. And it was the perfect way to sort of magnify the Groundswell Project's expertise about how to talk to children about death. We pitched it out to Parenting Press and they all picked it up with feature stories. So what tips do you have to share? I would say that the five top tips or myths or pitfalls is probably one of the most straightforward angles you can use straight away to get some mass media exposure for your business. And last but not least today, I'm going to talk about statistics. Journalists love a good old st statistic. The reason being, it makes them look like they've done some research. <laughs> it also um, makes you feel as the consumer of the media that again, you've learned something in a very short period. Oh. And you instantly feel smarter that you know a statistic that you can just rattle off next time you meet someone that you're trying to impress. So, Statistics are a very powerful media angle. Now, this is our beautiful client, Tracy McMillan, and she owns a legal firm in Queensland called Forge Legal. But Tracy is an innovator, and she has just launched in December this incredible platform called No Lawyers. And No Lawyers is designed to help people who cannot afford the legal fees that most lawyers charge for family law or any other law for that matter, to go to her platform and negotiate property settlement, child custody, etc., with their um, partner that they're separating from. And the platform does it all for you. And then you press click and it ends up in a 
court really document that you just take to the court and the whole thing costs around $250 for that document, which is pretty amazing. Now, we could not wait to share this story because it's revolutionary and it's going to help so many people. So we did it with the angle of um, statistics. So we went out to the media saying 30% of people are forced to self-represent. And as a result, they're in court and it's not great for them, it's not great for their kids or their family. It's completely overwhelming. It's not good for anyone. So as a result, Tracy started No Lawyers because she was faced with turning away 60% of clients who call, or potential clients who called her but simply couldn't afford the legal fees. So that's the story we pitched to A Current Affair. And that story was um, aired in mid-January, so the site was launched at the end of December. And Tracy was so emotional, and so was I actually, because it was a perfect six minute, it looked like an ad, but not a cent was paid to Nine Network for this story. And by the end of the story, um, within 24 hours, she had 6,000 unique visitors jump straight onto her site and about 15% started using it straight away. The funny thing is Tracy was in Queensland an hour behind me. So I, I actually totally forgot about that. So I was saying, oh my gosh, this story is so amazing. She's like, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> and, but she, she was getting calls from her developers telling her how many people were logging in. It was just so exciting. And then that same story um, was featured on news.com.au, um, which is the major news corp online news site. A whole great story all about um, the no platform uh, no lawyers platform, the statistics, some case studies, and again, that got a whole lot of surge of more people coming onto the website. So it was very exciting for both of us. Now, the beauty is that when you combine traditional media with your di digital marketing, you get 10 times the power. What I mean by that is there's a few ways you can do that, 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 that they work together. Um, this was an angle from our client, um, Sylvia Damiano. She's a fantastic leadership expert. And one of the angles we put out there for her was saying sorry won't help women break the glass ceiling. And actually that's another angle. It's the thought leadership angle. So news.com.au ran this story. And then as you can see there about my brain institute, which is Sylvia's business, it wasn't circled in the article, obviously, but it was a click through um, straight back into their website. So that really helps with her search engine uh, uh, organics. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's just a great way to, to, to enhance your digital marketing activity. The other thing is when a network, for instance, does a story and they're getting great engagement, they'll then put it on their Facebook page. And I don't know, no matter how well you look after your Facebook page and how much money you put into it, it's probably not as powerful as a Facebook page of a major media organisation, um, like a TV station, for instance. So here they shared the entire story of Clubber Size, which is another awesome business founded by an incredible English lady. And we launched this business in Australia. It was a, it's a new sort of fitness craze, really, really fun. So they shared the story, uh, and as you can see, within a very short time frame, they had 3.8 thousand shares, 31,000 comments, lots of engagement, um, and it really, it actually went viral. So that is how these things work together really, really well. So I'm here to tell you that the media is there for the taking. It helps you develop and build your trust and credibility. And you're creating a win-win situation. Journalists are looking for story. You've got fantastic stories to share. So I suggest um, you take, you know, you believe in yourself, you give yourself a voice and you go out there and you get yourself um, some fantastic media. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure speaking to you today.